Soft Currency Economics by Warren Mosler The Inelasticity of the Reserve Market Lagged versus Contemporaneous Accounting The Fed defines the method that banks are required to use in computing deposits and reserve requirements. The period which a depository institution's average daily reserves must meet or exceed its specified required reserves is called the reserve maintenance period. The period in which the deposits on which reserves are based are measured in the reserve computation period. The reserve accounting method was amended in 1968 and again in 1984, but neither change altered the Fed's role in the market for reserves. Before 1968, banks were required to meet reserve requirements contemporaneously. Reserves for a week had to equal the required percentage for that week. Banks estimated what their average deposits would be for the week and applied the appropriate required reserve ratio to determine their reserve requirement. The reserve requirement was an obligation each bank was legally required to meet. Bank reserves and deposits, of course, continually change as funds are deposited and withdrawn, which confounded the bank manager's task of managing reserve balances. Because neither the average deposits for a week nor the average amount of required reserves could be known with any degree of certainty until after the close of the last day, it was like trying to hit a moving target with a shaky rifle. Therefore, in September 1968, lag reserve accounting, LRA, replaced contemporaneous reserve accounting, CRA. Under LRA, the reserve maintenance period was seven days ending each Wednesday. Required reserves for a maintenance period were based on the average daily reservable deposits in the reserve computation period ending on a Wednesday two weeks earlier. The total amount of required reserves for each bank and for the banking system as a whole was known in advance. Actual reserves could vary, but at least the target was stable. In 1984, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System reinstated CRA. The reserve accounting period is now two weeks. Reserves on the last day of the accounting period are one-fourteenth of the total to be averaged. For example, if a bank borrowed $7 billion for one day, it would currently add one-fourteenth of $7 billion, or $500 million, to the average level of reserves for the maintenance period. Although this system is called contemporaneous, it is, in practice, a lagged system because there is still a two-day lag. Reserve periods end on Wednesday, but deposit periods end on the preceding Monday. Thus, even under CRA, the banking system is faced with a fixed reserve requirement as it nears the end of each accounting period. In 1984, adopted, the 1984 adoption of CRA occurred as federal officials, economists, and bankers debated whether shortening the re reserve accounting lag could give the Fed control of reserve balances. The change was consciously designed to give the Fed direct control over reserves and changes in deposits. Federal Reserve Chairman Volcker favored the change to CRA in the mistaken belief that a shorter lag in reserve accounting would give the Fed greater control over reserves and hence the money supply. Chairman Volcker was mistaken. The shorter accounting lag did not and could not increase the Fed's control over the money supply because the depository institution's reserve requirements are based on total deposits from the previous accounting period. Banks, for all practical purposes, cannot change their current reserve requirements. Under both CRA and LRA, the Fed must provide enough reserves to meet the known requirements, either through open market operations or through the discount window. If banks were left on their own to obtain more reserves, no amount of interbank lending would be able to create the
the necessary reserves. Interbank lending changes the location of the reserves, but the amount of reserves in the entire banking system remains the same. For example, suppose the total reserve requirement for the banking system was $60 billion at the close of business today, but only $55 billion of reserves were held by the entire banking system. Unless the Fed provides the additional $5 billion in reserves, at least one bank will fail to meet its reserve requirement. The Federal Reserve is and can only be the follower, not the leader when it adjusts reserve balances in the banking system. The role of reserves may be widely misunderstood because it is confused with the role of capital requirements. Capital requirements set standards for the quality and quantity of assets which banks hold on the quality of its loans. Capital requirements are designed to ensure a minimum level of financial integrity. Reserve requirements, on the other hand, are a means by which the Federal Reserve controls the price of funds which banks lend. The Fed addresses the quantity and risk of loans through capital requirements. It addresses the overnight interest rate by setting the price of reserves.